Hey there, a huge thank you to all the names on screen right now. The renegades who click the join button down below and contribute to the channel financially. Usually appreciate that, my friends. Enjoy the show. And uh, welcome back to Noita and Supper of Let's Suffer Together back inside the mountains, my friend. And today, as you can see in from the title, you've obviously gathered a little bit about what we're here to do already. You're gonna have to throw me a little bit of rope here, but I am here to fully explain myself and to showcase and to tell a great story about how I believe we may finally solve the cauldron, although it is very speculative. But I do feel I've got enough points of interest that it's worth taking on the large amount of large amount of effort it would require to attempt such a thing. So as you can see, we've got a lovely pile of fungus. Massive fungus growth over there. Growing proper tall. And that's important because we're going to a, need a lot of it. Also, my plan extends far into the game. I'm going to be utilizing the new game pluses. So, we know the cauldron exists. So, to give a bit of context as to how I see the cauldron. You've got the end of everything. A spell which is hidden away. Law-wise, it is argued that... The Hisi, one of the main kind of antagonists of the game, little trolls you go around and fight, um, hid the end of everything, or someone like the gods or whoever, hid the end of everything in the egg of technology, which, to be fair, the Hisi are, you know, the technological faction, so you're automatically connected with the Hisi. So you've got the end of everything, which is using... I'll show you. Using the symbol... For the great work. The magnum opus. The philosopher's stone. The end of everything. However, very, very, very dangerous. So the Hisi saw this as a massive threat. And hid it away in the end. Hid the end of everything. In the egg of technology. And you have to go on a bit of a convoluted mission. To go find it and unlock it. But it's hidden away from you. For purposeful reasons. That the Hisi don't want you getting that level of power. Now, the cauldron is hidden away also. But the end of everything is very spell-related, magic-related. And if a, if you can boil Noita down to anything, it's about magic and alchemy and Finnish mythology, of course, but concentrating on the first two. So you've got the end of everything, which is magic. The cauldron being one of the final mysteries and secrets of the game concerns, in my opinion, alchemy. I mean, it's a giant pot, right? I mean, come on. Yeah, no, I mean, subtle hint there. But concerning alchemy, and this is hidden away. When you first come here, I mean, this is to the left of the Hisi base. Right next to the Hisis again, right? Kind of right proper close. Filled in with sand, buried, hidden away, locked away. Also, on certain days, this cauldron here will be destroyed. And that plays an important part later. Um... That most theories that I thought of and heard about don't really solve the void liquid problem. And I think I've managed to include it in this theory quite successfully. But most of it is shifted the void away and it's not a problem anymore. I don't want to do that because I feel, feel like it's a bit simplistic. Oh, just get rid of it. It's really easy. I've got videos on how to make unlimited void liquid. You can shift it really easy. Now... Could the cauldron be the alchemy equivalent to the end of everything? Possibly. Now, when it comes to outside information, which we're going to be using to approach a solution to the cauldron, we already are rewarded with the red amulet for using outside information. In the game, there is a quest for 34 orbs, where you use outside information based on your seed to stand in an, an exact pixel location and use the end of everything to get a great chest which gives you an extra orb. You use outside meta information to solve a puzzle. So, we already have a precedence in the game for using outside information. Wisdom. Knowledge. Things the game really wants you to search for. Maybe the wisdom isn't in the game in terms of... 
we need that outside information to solve it. And maybe the devs are actually looking for us to do that. And it's not a bad thing. We already get the little red amulet for that 34 fob, right? I think about it like that. It's not the worst thing in the world to get outside sources. Or any sort of solution. So... You have the fungus, which provides you with a shifting ability. If you eat a certain amount of fungus, 180, 190 seconds of fungus, if you're holding a potion, or even just randomly, it changes one material to another. Now, this can actually be seen on something like Noitool or Craxida. We're running the beta branch at the moment, but... This is our shift list for our seed at the moment. Now, if you're running the beta branch, you'll need to use Noitool Beta, which you can find really easy through Google or just type in dev.noitool.com and then, you know, find the beta. But, so, we have a list here of 20 shifts. You will have 20 shifts in the game. You will be able to shift 20 times and no more. Now, my main idea is to show the devs that we are capable alchemists in a long-term and difficult situation. Now, the cauldron is there, and the cauldron is also available in New Game Pluses. It's in regular game, New Game Plus 1, all the way up to New Game Plus 28. Now, we have 20 shifts. Yes, it doesn't equal 29, because in theory, and actually, there are 29 cauldrons from 0 to 28, because New Game 0 is, you know, just not New Game Plus 1. So you've got 29 in total, all the way up to New Game Plus 28. But you have 20 shifts. So you've kind of got to roll with the theory that there are nine cauldrons that you are not going to be using or you will use in another way as part of this plan. Or it's an allowance by the devs to allow us to fail from time to time. Or because void days exist... The cauldron can be destroyed. Maybe you just move on to the next new game plus and utilize it. But what am I really talking about here? We have the list for our shifts, right? Now, my idea is to put, say, the very first shift is this one. Then you've got the second shift here, the third shift here. So if we ate a load of fungus, if we had lava, it would shift into rock. If we wait five minutes and then shift again, Silver, brass, and copper would shift into whiskey. Blood would shift into steam. Silver, brass, and copper would shift into steam. Silver, brass, and copper would shift into whiskey. But hold on. We see multiples of the same there. So how does that work? How do you shift some how do you shift silver, brass, and copper into whiskey? And then into steam. It doesn't really work. Now, this is where the difficulty level and concentration comes in. Over a long period of time. So, number one. I want to, for every cauldron we, we find, from 0 to 19 in New Game Plus. So, New Game Plus 0, we would shift this. New Game Plus 1, we would shift this. New Game Plus 0, want it. <laughs> New Game Plus 2, we would shift that. New Game Plus 3, we would shift that. So, one shift per new game. However, in a very specific way. So, we have lava to rock. If we go back to the game, what I would do is fill the cauldron full of lava, then shift. So, the cauldron is also called the Altar of Permanence, we think, due to the code of the game, possibly telling us that. Now, shifting is a permanent thing. If you shift something away, it can never come back. So you are demonstrating through the Altar of Permanence a demonstration of your power to permanently shift something away. Again, as I kind of go through the context of all this hopefully it becomes clear it might be a little bit confusing at the start but you know it's a bit of a thought out process which kind of draws me to it even more so for the very say this isn't this is new game plus zero regular game i would fill this with lava shift it would turn to rock in the cauldron we would leave that then we would leave the rock in there as a sign of permanence of change then go to new game plus one where we would then fill in the next cauldron with silver, brass, and copper, which would shift to whiskey. We leave the whiskey in there. We go to New Game Plus 2, put blood in the next cauldron we find in New Game Plus 2. That would turn to steam. But then silver, brass, and copper turns back up on our shift list 
Now, how can that be? We've got rid of it. It's turned into whiskey. This is where the attention to detail comes in. And a sign to the devs that you pay attention to the alchemic importance of what's happening. You can demonstrate your competence, skill, and you can pay attention on a long-term basis, which I think is really important to show the devs in terms of a puzzle they've created, and maybe they've created a puzzle around alchemic kind of competence. So, silver, brass, and copper have turned to whiskey. But it would be whiskey transformed next to it. Next to the word whiskey, it would have transformed. So you'd have regular whiskey and whiskey transformed in the world. What you would do, if silver, brass, and copper showed up again, I mean, just ignore the held material. We could use held material to alter de the destiny of this. Um, and maybe we should. Maybe we can work that into the solution. Solution somehow. However, what we would do is take whiskey transformed... And of course, noting all this down as we go along, never missing a beat, always understanding what is what. Because silver, brass, and copper has turned into whiskey transformed, when it shows up again, we put whiskey transformed into the cauldron, which would then turn to steam. So you would actually have two different steam transformed, which is a problem if steam comes up, which it can do. But as you've seen, steam would never come up alone. Steam and smoke, if it ever shows up on the left-hand side, come as a grouping, much like silver, brass, and copper come in. So if any one thing disappears, because these things that get shifted into are always singular. The things we can shift away are multiple, meaning we've got multiple ways of delivering into the cauldron that change. But again, one shift per cauldron, leave the result in there. And over time, the world will change. You're going to have to go down a new game plus where the world is slowly changing and adapting around you. Uh, and you're going to have to adapt with it. Otherwise, you'll get destroyed. But, again, showing competence in the game, showing competence in the alchemical nature of what you're doing to change the world around you. Right, then. However, like, what more leads me to this is some... I think it was Hempooli said back in the day, when the cauldron and the eye puzzles were first put out there, uh, there was a tweet that said something to the effect of, best not to worry about it just yet. This is a very, kind of, in the Noya community, popular thing that pops up when we're talking about eye and cauldron theory. Best not to worry about it just yet. Now, ever since that, we've received updates a lot of the updates have focused around fungal properties. Like, we've been given sacks. We can carry, like, silver, brass, and copper around in a sack now. So we can go back to the Noitul. We can take silver, brass, and copper in a pouch and insert it into the cauldron and fill the cauldron really easy. We can also shift via a sack if we wanted to. We can also have in-potion interactions because... So, it doesn't actually show up here. But you can get gas on this left-hand side for what we would need to put in the cauldron to shift. We can now make smoke in a potion through competent alchemical kind of use. We could also say take... Well, we couldn't actually take the steam because it would be steam transformed. We'd need to make it fresh or find a potion full of it or, you know, use our alchemical skill to make a potion full of steam, smoke or flammable gas or something like that. But we can do it now. That's been added to the game ever since Hempuli's statement. Also, we all... For the longest time... Fungus is part of the shift, right? Fungus, among us, it, you can shift fungus blood and we, we, the pink stuff on the side there was weird fungus, right? This stuff, that pink fungus can be shifted away. We might have to put that in the cauldron and shift it away. However, that's not the only thing you can use to trip on. You can use mystery fungus, which is fungus blood toxic and sand that would make a permanent solution that can't be shifted away we can find green fungus in the first floor if we got green slime we can put it on lava and make green fungus we can make yellow fungus now you can eat glue you can eat frogs um so many things have been added to point towards tripping balls well you know what i mean 
it's just been a, a somewhat focus in pushing in that direction to more tripping, more tripping, and focusing on that alchemical element to be able to shift material. And personally, I've never heard of this kind of idea or theory before, so I am claiming it. I don't know if anyone's worked on this kind of thing, but I've had no kind of... Firstly, <laughs> I was looking at it from how many potions are there in the game? If there's 29 of them, okay, just put one potion in every cauldron and work from there. And then I realized, you know, it's a bit simplistic. Let's move it forward. I thought of a shift kind of list and what we could do there and came up with this. So, yeah, coming fresh at you with a fresh idea, hopefully. But, luckily for us, despite the fact we can shift into acid... The cauldron is EDR, extremely, extremely dense rock. Now, anything that we shift into, extremely dense rock should withstand and be able to hold anything we shift into, even acid. However, the void days, as I mentioned before, which a lot of theories just gloss over, doesn't matter. It also goes into the discipline. We would have to use outside information or have a discipline to be able to register void days exist we need to get around that because we can't actually use really one of those void one of the shifts to concentrate on void liquid it would be kind of a waste we wouldn't be at the cauldron itself when we do it because the cauldron would be destroyed otherwise also if we shifted void into something else Every time you approach a cauldron on a void day, it would be filled with another li and filled with another liquid. And I kind of want to avoid that, just as a discipline thing. You could empty the cauldron, but like I said, a bit more discipline and just focusing on going to the cauldron on non-void days, doing this process, taking the day off on void days, and coming back on non-void days to continue the discipline and the process. The long term. New game plus 20 blah run, you know? But again, mostly the alchemical purity. Like, if you go and study alchemical texts and stuff like that, there's a. You've got the kind of chemical side and you've got the philosophical side. A lot of it is focused on the purity of the result. So I want to really focus on that. But the ever expanding list of fungus to shift that won't be shifted out of the game. I mean, pretty much the only fungus that gets removed that we can trip off is weird fungus. Everything else just stays. I mean, you've got about five to six to seven times more things that you can trip on that will never be removed compared to the one thing that can be shifted away. But the fact it's called the altar of permanence and we are permanently changing something, we're looking to outside information and the game uses the imagery, especially while tripping, of three eyes. Again, when it comes to the use of three eyes, like the third eye on the forehead, the kind of philo philosophical or metaphysical eye of knowledge and wisdom. Perhaps the devs are looking at it from a sort of view that the game is its own world. What we're doing as the player by looking at outside information is using, <laughs> again, it's kind of silly, but kind of not at the same time. We're using a third eye in a kind of way by using non-actual game information and bringing it into the game to produce a result. You feel me? Maybe. But we already have the precedence that we're allowed, or the devs have created puzzles around outside information with the 34 Forbes. So the cute thing as well is that you could not accidentally stumble on the answer to this puzzle. You would need to, you know, have a purpose with this every single seed will have its own answer its own separate answer every shift list of 20 shifts would be different so you've got different you've got millions and billions of different possible combinations that could if this is the solution solve it which is also really quite cool that there is no one answer 
the answer is dependent on your seed and your shift list. Which is quite nice. <laughs> but then you get little micro things as well. The, you remember I mentioned the mystery fungus before? The type of fungus that spreads on sand and never goes away. Um, and it just keeps on spreading, and it's it's kind of malignant. Is that the right word? It spreads, right? You put a tiny little bit of mystery fungus on sand, it goes everywhere. It spreads throughout all the sand. And that is a permanent way. So, like, say I carried 1% mystery fungus in a pouch, sprayed it on sand, I'd have unlimited, you know, mystery fungus that I could chew on and trip any time I wanted. What's the cauldron buried in? Well, wouldn't you know it? It's covered in sand. You know, top left up there, sand. So, the cauldron could be covered in its solution. You know what I mean? The artistry behind that would be really cool as well. I feel like I just... Every time I think about everything I've said, it just all kind of fits together really well. Whether this is the a solution or not, I think it's a really great starting point to bounce off, to do some work. Now, we also have mega problems, right? Do we do this on a fresh save? Do we do it pacifist? Do we do it with a 34 orb? Do we do the suns in the sky, the sun down below? Hold, right? We start at the most basic and we branch out into complexity. See if the most basic thing will work. Put the do the 20 shifts and which I'll be doing over at twitch.tv forward slash let's suffer together from tomorrow. It's a non void day tomorrow. I'm gonna be going on early, smashing it. I hope you can all can join me uh, for a very a, a long adventure. New game plus 20 with this kind of discipline over a long period of time is no joke, right? Now, going back into the discipline. Multiple liquids can be called the same thing. There are multiple types of water, multiple types of blood. You know what I mean? So having the alchemical discipline to know what is what, again, is showing the game. Your prowess in alchemy, which I think will be at the core of this. Now, I might have missed one or two things out, but over the course of the streams, we'll be discussing it back and forth. Again, I hope you've got a little bit of an idea about where I'm going with this and why I'm excited. A, just a little bit, you know... Because I haven't had an idea like this. Kind of ever. I really feel I kind of... I just feel... Uh, every little bit. Just kind of... Every time I think about it. Every... Hits every mark. I need it to hit along the way. I haven't found... Personally. Mainly because I probably haven't... I've been just kind of looking... Trying to look for the positives. Trying to fit it in. Um, and this is where you all come in, trying to get the negatives as well, because I don't, you know, I toot my own horn, I want to push my own idea, but I also want someone to come and knock it down if possible as well. Like the other cauldron video I did where the wand thing, that I immediately, you know, I think it was Keith in uh, the comments mentioned that I was wrong. Basically, I went, did the stream, the next day found out I was wrong, put another video out saying, I'm humbled, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I was completely wrong. So, if someone could do that, that'd be fantastic. Um, but, until that time where I disprove it, I'll be working on this and oh, moving forward with it. But I hope... Oh, I put it across, at least, in a way people can understand. It's, it's kind of basic, but the actual intricacies of the interwoven fabric of the idea, I think is where I've sold it for myself anyway. And I hope... That we can all come together as a community and here at LST and the Noited community and kick some ass with this. Because, again, it's just something fun regardless. Because shifting the cauldron, doing long runs in Noita, hey, it's all stuff we love. So I don't think there's any harm in making this video and putting my theory. My, my, this is my strongest theory. I think this will be my strongest theory ever. This is why I'm making this video. And this is why I'm making this kind of declaration and push the... I'm going to be working hard on this, if you want to work hard on it yourself. Hey, we're here, over on the stream, in the comments down below. There for you, to answer your questions, to have discussions on this. Um, yeah, I think I've run out of notepad. Roughly. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it's just the complexity of the alchemical chain that you're following. The... 
you know, basically become an alchemical scientist. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But getting the old liquid gas and powder, getting it deleted, permanently deleting stuff in the altar of permanence. Oh, can't wait to get cracking. Today was a void day of all days when I thought of the idea. But I'm doing this at like 20 to 3 a.m. in the morning. Ready for a fresh day tomorrow. I'm already here at the cauldron in the regular game. We're going to jump off from this point tomorrow on stream. I hope you can join me again over at twitch.tv forward slash let's supper together. Ah, uh, thank you all for taking the time to enjoy and listen to me today. I've been supper of let's supper together. If you like what we do, again, we stream over at Twitch. The like button's down there. Subscribing. Again, simple acts for you that have... Major benefits for myself, of course, but also for you, where you're notified about when we put out fresh content most days. And, hey, get to enjoy the things we love. I'm branching out with some Helldivers at the moment as well, some Lethal Company over on the stream. Helldivers will be coming to YouTube videos. I never really figured out how to make Lethal Company content for the old YouTubes, but, hey, we got some great shorts with that as well. Um, yeah. Again, a big thank you to those who click the join button down below. If you want to contribute to the channel, you can do financially on a monthly basis by clicking the join button down below and becoming part of the Renegades, helping support what we do here on that kind of basis. It has such profound impact. I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of people on YouTube or over on Twitch. So a huge, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for people who choose to do so. You don't have to, but again... Supporting this kind of content is the only way to actually, again, keep it going. So it humbles me every day that people would choose to, you know, click that join button, subscribe over on Twitch. If you get free Twitch Prime, if you have Amazon Prime, that you can uh, come over to Twitch and drop for free. If you have Amazon Prime, link it up to your Twitch account. Uh, drop that. And you get that once a month as well. Uh, yeah, description, there's discords and whatnot where you can go come and chat about the cauldron video games life you know I'll talk about that life man you know the complexities of that uh, pale into comparison the complexities of alchemy but hey we can have a good discussion you know yeah get down in the description there's a bunch of stuff there as well like the coffee link oh the coffee link where's the coffee link oh no it's a bit like yeah there we go no what are you doing the coffee link it's this oh there it is yeah coffee link coffee forward slash lst suffer for one-off contributions. Again, people who support me. Huge thank you. Whether it's through the copy or through the join button or over on Twitch. I'll be back. I'll be back soon with a new video. I'm going to show you all the extreme. Because um, the Helldivers video I put out, you know, it was considering. I hope you all enjoyed it, by the way. It was kind of pedestrian, in a way, like, just walking around a planet, having a bit of a pop, you know? Um, we're gonna show you some real extreme, uh, gameplay, in terms of the enemy. Like, we're just climbing the difficulty at the moment. I want to bring you some Helldivers difficulty, the hardest difficulty. Because the other one, that was kind of, you know, a walk in the park, a bit of a picnic. But I hope it gave you a feel about the game. And now, next time, we're gonna give you a feel about the absolute adventure that is Helldivers combat. Um, when the big boys, when the big bugs, when the big robots get involved and when we're fighting them. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But until next time, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your patience and, and trying to understand what the hell I'm saying. What the hell I'm doing here, you know? I know uh, sometimes it's hard, but hey, thank you for sticking with me. I'll be back. See you soon, my friends. Enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world. And I'll catch up with you soon. Take it easy, guys. Peace. And a huge thank you to the other selection of people who click the join button down below and contribute to the channel financially. Pound us! Again, a huge thank you for the support. I'll catch up with you soon, my friends. You take it easy. Goodbye. And see you soon. Much love, guys.